Hello, and welcome back to the Simplifiers podcast, where we take topics in business and in life and simplify them. And friends, I love it when I get to do part ones and part two conversations with special guests that we've had here over the last few seasons. And this, my friends, is part two of how to go vegan. And we're really going to go deep dive into it today. Part one, if you remember way, way back in the middle of August, episode 131 was how to stock a plant-based pandemic pantry. And, you know, I feel like that was the first step into like getting things all in order and starting to like take an assessment and an audit of what you've got in your kitchen and your pantry. But now it's like, let's go in. Let's do the thing fully. So I'm welcoming back my special guest, who is Michelle Kane. She is the founder of the popular food and lifestyle website, worldofvegan.com. And she's also a YouTube personality who's reached millions, literally millions, through her creative and relatable videos. She's the co-author of the Friendly Vegan Cookbook, as well as the co-host of the Plant Powered People podcast. I'd love to welcome her back to the podcast, Michelle Kane. Hey, Michelle. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here for part two to dive into what I've been living and breathing my past, I guess it's been 13 years that I've been vegan now. <laughs> oh my goodness. And so since when we last recorded, uh, I did do the thing. Like I literally went through all of my pantry exactly to the T of what we, we discussed, um, took a look at everything in my freezer and my fridge and was like, oh my God, do I really need this? Or is there something better? Is there a better alternative? And, you know, since then I've personally, and you didn't pay me to say this, like I do feel better when I eat more plant based foods. Like I just genuinely feel better. Uh, thank goodness. A lot of people say that. Yeah. A lot of people, I'm not sure exactly. I'm curious to hear what exactly you're feeling. A lot of people say they feel more energy. Some people even feel like more, more clear minded mm -hmm. as they walk through the day. Um, yeah. people even start to see like their skin clear up all sorts of different things happen when you switch from meat and dairy to even just incorporating more plants in your lifestyle. So I'm curious to hear more about that. I'm so excited that you were a plus plus student <laughs> just going and rocking it right now. Well, and you know, to be fair, there was some slip ups here and there and I wasn't perfect. Um, but, you know, ha having gone through that process of like going, OK, this is step one of like assessing what's in the pantry, uh, getting rid of the junk and the crap. Right. And all the chemical processed foods and grossness um, and then going, OK, well, you know, it isn't that big of a leap to have tofu instead of chicken, you know, in a stir fry. It wasn't that big of a leap to, you know, just cut the red meat entirely and go for like a a corn kind of minced meat. It really isn't that big, you know, especially now. So yeah, the things that I felt um, and, and noticed was that my skin was clearer, my stomach didn't feel as bloated, uh, and I just felt lighter. I, I don't know how to explain that, just not as such a heaviness um, physically and yeah, like mentally. However, I will tell you this, Michelle, and, and just keep it between you and me. Let's not tell the world who's listening. <laughs> so knowing Everyone that- Everyone close your ears. <laughs> right. Yes. Knowing that you and I are having this conversation today and I was like, okay, well, Mary, what is it going to really take for you to stop eating meat and actually take the leap to become a vegetarian? I, I was like, okay, the week leading up to this conversation, I was like, I'm going to eat all the hamburgers and all the chicken burgers and all the delicious things that, you know, I consider like comfort foods. And so I have done that for like the last, I don't know, week, week and a half. And I will just say on the record, I feel horrible today, like absolutely gross. I feel <laughs> like sweaty and bloated. And if you're watching the video, ugh, yeah. And, and I just, I, I can see it like already. I'm like, oh, I was doing so well. And then I fell off the bandwagon like hard for eight days <laughs> and I feel gross. It's actually a really good experience to have. And I'm glad you went through that because first of all, the way that we've been eating, oftentimes we never take a step back and try something different. So mm -hmm. whatever we're feeling in life, that's slowly coming on that we're dealing with in our bodies, sluggishness, not clear minded, like foggy headedness, whatever it comes on so slowly and we never give our bodies a break of what we're used to eating. And so you don't even really know you're struggling with something. And so that's what a lot of people find when they start eating plant based and they take out the meat and the dairy and they load up with tons of nutritious foods. They're like, Whoa, I didn't even realize I was so tired before until that stuff 
went away and yeah. suddenly I have all this energy. Where did this energy come from? Mm. And so it's really, it's good to take sort of a self audit of try eating some different ways. Give some, some things a time for a chance for a few weeks, see how it goes, especially a month. If you can give something a solid month and clock in with like, how are you feeling? How's your body responding to that? That can be a really powerful way to, to, uh, feel extra inspired to stay, take steps towards eating healthier. Yeah. And, you know, my sleep has been horrible for the last week and a half too. And if you really think about it, it's like, well, maybe that's because of my digestion. You know, like there are multiple factors here at play. And so it is fascinating for me. And I would probably say if anybody else is listening and thinking about going vegan or vegetarian, maybe not doing what I just did. Because <laughs> like, I just tell you, it's, it's horrible feeling right now. But, you know, I, I, I guess it was also that sense of lack of like, oh, I'm never going to have this food again. And like, I'm going to miss it. And, you know, half of it, I was like, oh, God, I just the, the consequences were not worth the reward uh, that I thought I was going to get from it. Right. And it is a very common thing when you think, oh, I'm going to I'm going to go vegan or vegetarian on X date. Mm -hmm. You think on this date, suddenly all of my favorite foods are gone. And I really encourage people not to think in that perspective yeah. because it does make you want to binge on all the things that you feel that you can have that you won't be able to have later. And it makes you, when you get to that point that you're like, oh gosh, today's the day you feel kind of nervous about it. Mm. It brings up anxiety. It has a lot of like negativity. It's like, you're looking at the glass half empty of what's going to be missing instead of looking at your glass is really going to be overflowing. There's yeah. so many new things entering your life and those comfort foods that you love and you're worried about missing. There's actually probably a vegan version of it that tastes almost identical or that you can whip up in your kitchen that's almost identical. So you're really not missing out on anything. You're bringing so much more delicious foods into your life that you've never even explored before. So hopefully that can help lift that level of anxiety yeah. off of people's shoulders a tiny little bit. Yeah. So I know on your website, you have a um, guide. It's a 10-step guide for going vegan. And by the way, I'll put the link in the show notes for people if you guys want to check that out. You just go to the simplifierspodcast.com and you'll find it right there. So what I thought it would be fun, Michelle, is let's take five of those and take a deep dive into the these top tips um, really to help others that might be like me that are really like on the cusp, they're ready to go. And side note, I don't know if I'm ready to go full vegan. Uh, however, I am committing today that I am going to go vegetarian and start that for 30 days and then test and assess, right? Uh, and go from there. So how does that sound? That sounds so awesome. I kind of wish we had talked about this before because I would have suggested that you get your blood tested now and mm. your blood tested at the end of the 30 days because I can almost guarantee you that you would see massive change changes. Your cholesterol would drop significantly most likely and all other all these other health indicative factors that actually show up in your blood tests yeah. would come through. And it's really fun to show that to doctors, especially doctors who um, – maybe a little bit skeptical about what you're doing. It's, that's really funny. I actually created a whole mini documentary called Seven Days, the Seven Days documentary. It's just 12 minutes long. And we chronicle this guy who has been eating a standard American diet with lots of fast food who goes plant fully plant-based for only seven days. He can eat as much as he wants and then tracking his health before and after yeah. and the trans transformation that happened within his body after just a week of taking the harmful stuff out of his, his diet was really magnificent. So I'm so excited to check back in in a month and see how you feel then as well. Yeah. Maybe we have to do a part three. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Maybe so. So what then do you feel is like the first step for people that are ready to stop eating meat? What would you recommend to them? The first thing that I would say, which may sound counterintuitive because you are like rearing to go mm -hmm. at this point, you want to try it. You're excited. You know all the health benefits. I would say take a breath and take it a little bit slow. It doesn't, it does not really make a difference whether you're starting on January 1st or like your dream date to start, or you start on some random Tuesday, whatever, whenever you end up fully where you're wanting to go does yeah. not matter in the scheme of things. What matters is that you can approach this and what's going to make it a, a longstanding change. That's really doable and fulfilling and a wonderful element in your life mm -hmm. is to, um, to, kind of step slowly into embracing and crowding out the 
the things that you're worried about missing with all of the good things. So that might mean different things for different people. If you're a very type A person that like wants to plan, set a date, go all in on that date, get your refrigerator cleaned out, get your house cleaned out, get your cookbooks in, your vegan cookbooks or vegetarian cookbooks in order in your kitchen and do all of that so you're ready to go, then then do that because that's how you'll feel best. But for a lot of people, that would be extremely overwhelming to go from eating one way one day to a completely different way without probably a network there supporting you or friends supporting you can lead to two things. One, you could feel extremely overwhelmed and yep. then you give up. <laughs> or two, you feel overwhelmed and you don't give up, but that's not a fun place to be Mm. feeling like you're constantly failing at this thing that you so badly wanted because you jumped all in. And so in order to prevent that, there's really simple things that you can do before going all the way. You can try some things like every single week or however often you want, integrate one new plant-based recipe into what you're cooking that week. Yep. And as you find more recipes that you love and you can lean on, then when you get to the point where you have, I don't know, maybe 10 of those, um, when you think I'm going to go vegan next week, starting next week, it's not like, what am I going to eat? You already right. know you have tried and true things that can in- integrate into your life. Um, and there's a lot of different approaches. Some people try eating a vegetarian or vegan one day a week. Mm-hmm. You could try, um, yeah, I don't know. You could try like just different smaller little approaches that are allowing you to dip your toes in, get familiar with the different, um, I don't want to say, cha- yeah, I'll say challenges, the challenges that you have to just learn how to yeah. overcome. And that doesn't mean that the challenges are negative. It's just like you, you see a block of tofu and you're like, what do I do with this? Yeah, it's this different. It's like nothing. It's different. You have to learn how to cook it. So yeah. the learning, the le- give the, give yourself a chance to learn mm-hmm. um, rather than saying, I'm starting on this day. I'm ending on that day. I'm going to power through the struggle and the suffering. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a time of suffering. It should totally be a time of joy. Yeah. And, and I think that's very valid advice. You know, the, the runway to get me to where I am today is, has been, has been months, you know, so mm-hmm. my son has been vegetarian for, gosh, almost probably two years now. So we've been cooking vegetarian for him, you know, for that long. Uh, We probably cut out red meat, uh, you know, right around March or so 2020, right at the beginning of the lockdown for the pandemic. And so, you know, we've had a good runway of like slowly inching ourselves towards it rather than just being like, well, I got to throw away 80% of my food and like figure something new <laughs> out. Like I, I think that would yeah. be totally overwhelming. And to be fair, I think you're right. Like I, in, in years past when I've contemplated this big shift, um, I think I got to a place where like, oh, this is too hard. Like when you get to that place where you're like, well, if I can't eat that and I can't eat that and I can't eat that, like what can I eat? And then that's where you get into a kind of a spiral of like sad and there's no hope and it's just like, oh, this is torture and treacherous and all that. But I think you're right. I think there there are other ways to ramp into it and take it slowly bit by bit so that you get more confident along the way, right? Yeah, absolutely. And also if you think about it, if you're telling yourself for this month, I'm going to be let's say vegan. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, oops, you ate something that was not vegan. Oh man. If you beat yourself up, whatever, or, Oh, this is feeling really hard. I don't know what to make. I don't have dinner. My snacks in the fridge are all something I can't eat. Uh, um, then your struggle is going to make you think I can't do this. I'm, this isn't for me as a whole. You reject the whole idea Mm -hmm. of eating healthier. Whereas if you're just saying I'm integrating more of this into my life that, and you, encounter those exact same struggles instead of thinking I'm going to just abandon this. That's you wouldn't, you'd just be like, okay, cool. My next meal is Mm -hmm. (laughs) plant-based. You you use it to lift you up. So whatever sort of mindset is going to work with the type of person that you are, embrace that and be strategic about making yourself, making sure that you're feeling positive in the steps that you're taking, because when you're loading your life with things that aren't feeling good, it's never going to be sustainable. And this is a way of eating that's delicious. It's healthy. It's going to make you make almost everyone who eats this way feel better. It's good for the planet. It's good for the animals. There's so many wonderful things that come with it, that it should be joyful. So make sure to hold on to that joy and don't let any of that negativity get in your precious bubble. (laughs) Yeah. It makes a lot of sense, which, you know, builds into point number two, you guys say the build a collection of great recipes. So where would we find these? Um, give us some ideas. 
Yes. So there are vegan recipes all over the place. You can look at Google. You can look at my site, worldofvegan.com. We have tons of recipes that are great for people just stepping into this lifestyle, even if they're relatively new in the kitchen. Lots of great recipes for you there. And then cookbooks. I highly recommend investing in maybe start with one so you don't get overwhelmed, but ultimately maybe a collection, maybe a vegan baking book, maybe yeah. a vegan main meals book. If you, if you want, like for the holidays, they have all these specific different books out there, but this is actually why I wrote the friendly vegan cookbook that came is coming out today. Yeah. Today is the day. And this is a book that I created specifically with all of you listening who have an inkling of wanting to try this lifestyle with you in mind. It's got recipes that are super healthy for a breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's got more decadent recipes that are going to make you feel like you're not missing out at all. Mm -hmm. Creamy fettuccine Alfredo that you'd never know is made from almonds rather than from cow's milk. All sorts of delicious recipes. And then also recipes that are great for the holidays because we are stepping into that season. You want to, I mean, if if you are going to be eating plants at Thanksgiving, uh, things are going to have to change up a little bit, most yeah. likely from what you were used to eating. So we made sure to create delicious green bean casserole and mashed potatoes and gravy and all of your favorite foods from these times that are so meaningful in your life that you can pretty easily make some swaps and they'll come out delicious and they're just made from plants instead of animals. Mm. And, you know, I have, I can vouch uh, 100%, I have done a couple of your recipes off of your website. One was, I think, like a banana, uh, like vegan crumb muffin and the kids loved it. They didn't know any different. Um, we've done like a tofu stir fry and, you know, amazing, great, beautiful, yummy stuff. Um, so, you know, and, and I think that that's it. It's like when you start to try out recipes and I think that there will probably be a couple of flounders. I, I can almost guarantee, right? And then in the coming yes. months, like I'll make something and be like, oh, not so great. Uh, yeah. Like, for example, I recently like experimented with tempeh and like doing a stir fry with that didn't quite turn out as like I thought it would. Um, but yeah. it's like building that confidence over time of like, oh, okay, I know that I can make, you know, this spaghetti mar marinara and it tastes great and fine and has veggies and yummy and everybody eats it. Um, I think what gets hard is where you like, you are experimenting and everything doesn't quite turn out like you think. Um, yes. That's where it's hard. Yeah, it's extremely, for, especially if you're not someone who's used to cooking new recipes all the time, which mm. I'd say most people are not. They have their bank of recipes they're used to leaning on. If you're going to invest in finding the ingredients and pulling out a recipe and getting it together in your kitchen and it doesn't turn out, that can be so deflating, if, especially if you're feeding your family yeah. and then you don't have anything else you can turn to to eat because this is the only vegan meal in the house. Like that can be super deflating, which is why it's really great to have that runway you were talking about of practicing mm. recipes so you have things that you can lean on and also having backup things. So if something goes really, really wrong, you always know you've got pasta and marinara sauce in the pantry, maybe totally. some plant-based meatballs in the freezer that you can turn to. But another thing that I love that you said is involving the kids because for anyone listening who does have a family, which is many of us, that can be where a big part of the challenge comes up. You're in it. They're not. That can be hard. Maybe yep. they are in it. But how fun is it to have a, to get a new cookbook, open it up, pull your family over and be like, hey, guys, let's flip through this. What looks good here? I'd mm -hmm. love to make some dishes that are super, super new and fun you guys pick them out, have them pick them and then you make them and it helps them feel invested and, and yeah, excited about the meals. And then the other thing is when you're introducing new foods to family, it's very fascinating how the people that you're serving food to will pick up on you. So mm -hmm. if you're going in insecure or like, Oh, I don't know if this turned out well, it's right. kind of nasty, but let's see, what do you think? They're probably going to say, Go, come into it skeptical and think, oh, I don't know. This is different, mom. This mm -hmm. is a little weird. Yeah. Um, so come in with a positive mindset. And if you go, mm, this is delicious, try it. So for anyone looking, if you want a great cookbook to start out with, I would love it if you check out mine. It's called The Friendly Vegan Cookbook and you can get it anywhere books are sold. Yeah. And, and you know, I have to say, having been able to get an advanced copy of this cookbook, it is so much fun and it's so approachable because it's not like you're going from eating cheeseburgers to eating bok choy, blah, 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 blah. Like not to, <laughs> not to, you know, jam on the bok choy, like, but I think 
I think a lot of the fear comes from like, oh my God, all of my things that I used, like my creature comforts are going to disappear. And, you know, you guys have recipes that are very, very similar to things that we grew up with in our childhood and nostalgia and all that, right? Exactly. That's what my co-author Tony Okamoto and I really wanted to do when we wrote this book. Mm. We wanted to find what are the meals that we first thought we were going to have to give up when we decided to eat plant-based. Yeah. Things like la- cheesy lasagna or stuffed shells or like I mentioned, green bean casserole, yeah. fettuccine Alfredo. That was a favorite dish of mine when I was a kid. And I thought when I'm going vegan, all right, that's bye-bye. I'm saying goodbye to that forever. And it's not the case at all. And so we um, created these dishes that are familiar. They're what you're used to eating. And um, when as once you get over the tiny little hump of like learning the, the small um, cooking techniques of how to turn plants into – creamy sauces and delicious foods, then it's suddenly easy. Um, yeah, I'd say going vegan is similar to riding a bike at first you're falling off all the time. You're like, this is impossible. I'm never going to get it. It's so hard. I quit. I'm not Mm going to, I'll just walk everywhere. Forget it. And then if you power through just the learning curve of it soon, you're like, Oh my God, this is so easy. I can get everywhere so much faster. I cannot believe I almost lived life never riding a bike. It's, it's very much like that. Well, it, and that's a great analogy because I mean, in the last month I have changed the staples in my fridge. So I'm using like a vanilla almond milk instead of uh, a cow's milk, you know, and, and we're using it with the cereal. We're using it in baking. I mean, no one notices the difference. I did get a, a recommendation from a, a vegan friend on um, a silk brand, uh, like it's a pea, oat, and and um, almond milk. And, you know, it's delicious on cereal. It's, it, you cannot tell the difference whatsoever. Um, but I mean, I think that's it. It's like slowly trying different things. I think we now have like a plant-based uh, cream cheese in our, our fridge and a plant-based um, like avocado oil butter, you know, that we're using. And I'm telling you guys, I'm, and again, she's not paying me to say this, like it does taste <laughs> literally the same. Um, and because I think the last time I tried to go vegetarian was probably like five or six years ago. Th- there was just not this kind of variety of yummy, delicious foods out there. Like it, the whole world's changed and, and for the better. It is a very different landscape today and it's so exciting. If you want to go vegan and you don't ever want to cook a thing in your life, you can do that. That Mm. didn't used to be the case. If you wanted cream cheese, you can very easily make your own cream cheese that's probably going to be even healthier than what you get in the store, but you don't have to. It's there waiting for you in the stores. Um, And luckily, um, I'll say right now, it's not everybody in the world has that kind of access, Mm. Um, but that is changing, thankfully. And for those who don't have access to a lot of those cool, fun products, take comfort in the fact that you're going to be saving more money because if you're making stuff from scratch, you'll be saving more money. You're going to be healthier because you're probably leaning on things like that are accessible, like rice and beans and quinoa and vegetables and whole foods. So you're going to be in the position that myself and so many people were a decade plus ago when there weren't all these cool new products. So don't make it think like it's not for you because you don't have access. Yep. It can totally still be. And in fact, you're probably going to do even even better for your body for it. Well, and I've seen the documentaries. I've seen the TV shows where it's like, oh, somebody, an average family of four that, you know, eats out a lot or does fast food or whatever. What's their monthly bill versus ones that actually, you know, cook from scratch foods, more plant-based you actually spend less, like you do spend less on your, your groceries and your, your eating out than ever before. A lot less. My mind was blown when I really looked into this. So my co-author of the Friendly Vegan Cookbook, Tony Okamoto, she runs the the website Plant Based on a Budget. So Mm. her whole life has been about showing how to eat plant-based affordably. And it is crazy and expensive. We teamed up to create some Plant Based on a Budget meal plans. Mm that you can find at plantbasedmealplan.com, but they show how to eat an entire week's worth of food for a food budget as little as $25, sometimes even less if you shop at stores like Winco or like those big box stores. Um, You can eat, create. it's like $1.20 a meal or Incredible. something. And if you're buying fast food, how quickly that adds up, you look and you're like, oh, it's a dollar menu. I'm ordering a few. But if you're ordering like a few things off the dollar menu and then a main, that right. could easily be five, six dollars for a single meal. Multiply that by your meals in the day plus snacks, 
plus a week times your family, it's actually not cheap at all. And that's for food that's ultimately going to cause health implications down the line. That's going to cause even greater expenses in your medical bills, which is no fun and any way you cut it. So it really is a huge myth that fast food is inexpensive. Yeah. I mean, that is the truth, especially if you live in America and you have to pay for your health care and you have to pay for your prescriptions and all the things. It's a vicious cycle that we buy into the idea of convenience and, oh, it's just there. I'll just eat that. So I don't have to rush around and I don't have time to, to make food. And I think that's one of the things as a total newbie to this that I have also had to learn um, is to reprioritize how I structure my day or my weekend even just to put in 30 minutes uh, to do some food prep, uh, chop some vegetables or, or whatever, or put in, I mean, it doesn't take that much, like maybe 30 minutes to just menu plan for the week ahead create a grocery list off of it. You know, it, it, I think in our heads we think, oh, this is going to take so much time and so much effort and I don't know where to begin. And it's like that we, we talk ourselves out of it, right? Um, and that's why I stopped and hadn't done it for so many years. It's just like, ah, I'll do it next month. Oh, maybe next year. Oh, the pandemic. You know, it's like, <laughs> but really at some point you go, oh, it, it really isn't that hard or time consuming. You just got to do it. You make a really good point about weekends too, because I think a lot of times where people hit the point where they're like, "This, I forget it, I can't do it," mm-hmm. is when they're in the middle of the week. It's a stressful week. You you've been on calls all day, or you come home exhausted, and you're like, "I don't have any dinner prepared. I don't know what I'm going to make." Right. Uh, you just the overwhelm gets to you, and no one wants to be living in a state of overwhelm. But your weekends or whatever your days off are, hopefully, if you have them, are such a great opportunity to take the pressure off, but make it a fun meal prep experience. And just like you said, little things like if you get garlic and you're using garlic in a dish, you can actually pre peel your garlic and then store it in a container in the fridge. So then you don't have to sit there tearing garlic apart every time you want to make a a delicious meal or stir fry. You can do things like pre chopping your onions, um, washing your vegetables and getting them ready to go cut up your carrots so that they're waiting in the fridge, ready to be snacked on or used in a recipe that really does make a huge difference. Especially if you have a family who's at any moment could be like, mom, what can I have to snack on? Mm -hmm. And then you have to stop what you're doing and find, create a snack using those weekends and making it fun makes all the difference in the world. It's huge. I mean, and I think that leads to our next point. So you talk about veganizing your kitchen. Um, and you know, yeah, to your point, uh, my kids, we luckily we, we've been kind of in this thought process for many, many, many years. And so they're, you know, almost 12 years old and 10 years old now. Um, and they know to snack on things like fruit or sugar snap peas or baby carrots or things like that, rather than, you know, chips and candy and sodas. I mean, that's just never been part of our family's household. Um, and that makes it so much easier, <laughs> like, you know, because if they haven't been raised on like junk food, uh, as snacks, they, they have been raised on whole foods for the whole. Um, it does make it easier. So when they do get hungry, like it's, that's the snack bowl is a giant bowl of fruit. Like just go get to that or the, the carrots and sugar snap peas and celery that's already been cut and in the fridge. So it's easy and they don't have to think about it. Yes, it's so true. And whether you're a kid or a teenager or an adult, our brains all work the same. If we're Mm -hmm. hungry and we go and open up the refrigerator and what we're seeing is string cheese, um, cookie, leftover cookies in the pantry, there's chips. Mm -hmm. And, and even if there's carrots there, if you have those other options there, you're, you're having to fight your own brain in order to choose the healthy option. Mm -hmm. But if you open the refrigerator and you're seeing their carrot sticks with hummus, you see, um, you know, plant-based guacamole dip Mm -hmm. or quinoa bites or whatever, whatever's there, the snack on, if those are your options, you're not thinking, Oh, I have to have carrots and hummus. You're thinking, mm, carrots and hummus. I'm yeah. gonna grab that it's quick and easy. And you don't have to fight your own brain. So if you are in, and not everyone's in this position because a lot of people live with friends and family who are not on board. So you do have to fight your brain, which is tough. Right. But if you're in the position where you um are able to really stock your kitchen in a way that will support the way you want to be eating and living, that makes everything so much easier. And even if you are living with people who are not on board, um, 
if you want to see if you're going to do a one month challenge, for instance, or you're going to try something for a week before you decide to do that on your own, talk to them, see if you can get them on board with you and say, Hey, what about just all of us try and do something good for our health for one week? We'll clean out the house and just make it like a a house wide team effort. If you can get that sense of camaraderie, that will take a huge amount of the struggle out of the equation and it becomes fun. Yeah. And we have done something like that before, um, in, in different aspects of the family. And what actually is great is I'll take it one step further and offer a reward at the end of the week or the month. That's an experience, not a food based reward, but an actual experience. Like let's go to this park or let's go, you know, to this adventure somewhere. And, you know, so the, I don't know that when you, when you use experiences as rewards, especially for something like this, they're totally on board to, you know, try something new because like, oh, we're working towards going to the safari park or going to the lake or whatever it might be. Um, and it's not, it's like starting to rewire that whole thing. Cause I was a kid of the eighties. Like I was rewarded with ice cream sundaes (laughs) and you know, all the, all the things. Right. And, and it's, it's rewiring that horrible behaviors from our childhoods. Yeah. I love that. Another interesting thing I just thought of that would be really cool for any families to do, especially when you are in these pandemic times and things are tight is, um, making it a financial challenge and bringing Mm. the family involved in that. So say, here's what we spent over the last month on groceries. We're going to try and save money this month by eating uh, whole foods and plants instead. You can try our meal plans if you want to give that a try and you'll save a ton of money. And then put that money somewhere, like make Mm. it tangible. Say this week or today, we save this much money. We're putting it in a piggy bank. And then our family is going to use this to do something fun. So it really makes it um, practical. You're helping your family and your kids, if you have them, learn that food is not food that just appears that doesn't have any price tag or value associated to it. But you're teaching them food costs money. We work hard for things. If we, you know, make different choices here, it means we can make have, have fun over here. You're, it's a lot of life lessons with that. And then you can also integrate the meaning behind food. Like what do these food choices mean when we are choosing, um, meat? Where did that come from? Like, Mm. who is this? Was, this was a being, this was an individual whose life, life ended for, for this meat. So if instead we choose this pasta dish, we're actually saving a life and that can be really empowering. Same thing with like a, a, a block of cheese. Cheese is the big one. So many people say I would go vegan, but I could never give up cheese. Think about that when you're there. Like this was a mama cow being separated from her baby. She had Mm -hmm. her baby torn away from her so that her milk could be pumped out and sold to humans to create cheese that we could eat. If instead you could choose this plant-based cheese or better yet, just choose some hummus and carrot sticks or whatever, fettuccine Alfredo made with with nuts. Mm -hmm. Um, If instead you're making different choices, you're actually – preventing a mama cow and her baby from being separated. Mm. Um, And so when you're thinking about food a little bit more deeply like that, it can really be, I mean, this sounds like a downer as I'm talking about it, but it's really empowering. Each one of us, every time we sit down to eat, our choices impact so much. And especially if we are eating meat or dairy or eggs, those, those choices are impacting another individual being who is either suffering or maybe won't have to suffer if we choose differently. So think about those things and have those family discussions and it can really empower you to be, um, Yes, sticking with it and joining in as a as a household to make positive food choices. And I, I, I appreciate you saying that because I think, you know, we all know that there are different ways of learning, right? Some people are visual learners, auditory learners, kinesthetic. So again, I, I like what you said about having the jar, you know, to see the money going in the jar. Um, but then also auditory, maybe listening to your podcast or listening, you know, back to this episode with your kids and, and going, oh oh, wow, I didn't think about that. Kinesthetic is having them part of the chopping and food prep experience, chopping of the plants and and veggies and things. Um, I like that. And I think that that changes the tone of things away from lack and scarcity and more towards, oh, this is fun and playful and abundance. And oh my gosh, all these beautiful, brightly colored fruits and veggies that are on my plate. Like maybe that will start to slowly change the course of the ship, you know? into a different direction. 
Yes. And with so many people homeschooling now, and we all are having to take a little bit more responsibility about what our kids are learning and how, um, I think it's a really beautiful opportunity. Whereas before when you're, the kids are going off to school, you're going off to work, everyone's leaving the house, just got to struggle to get the meal together. Now you can take that cooking as an opportunity to teach your kids about something very important in this world, how to cook, where our food comes from. Even if you like, if you have the luxury of having a space to grow a garden or grow some plants, indoors in the windowsill. Use these times to connect with your family and share memories, create memories over food. Your kids are going to grow up remembering what their parents fed them, mm. what you fed them, the the situations that happened around food. And so to be able to bring a little more time with your kids in the kitchen, creating delicious, healthful, nourishing food is such a powerful gift that you're giving to them. Yeah. And back to kind of veganizing your kitchen. So you don't need to go out and buy tons and tons and tons of equipment right now. But we, there, there's a point where you may find it's worth investing in like a high-powered blender, right, to, to make smoothies and create nut butters and things like that. What else would you recommend um, if people are ready to kind of up-level the, the, the stuff, the tools in their kitchen? Yeah. High powered blenders are awesome. I have a Vitamix and it is amazing, but I did not always, I spent most of my vegan years with just a regular blender. I think I got handed down that maybe my parents got for $10 somewhere and that worked just fine. So don't feel like you need to have these like really fancy equipment. You absolutely don't. You can work with what you have, but other tools that are really helpful. A food processor, um, is great. You can use that to chop, mints, uh, blend, create like thicker, um, you can make hummus, you can make your own hummus and save money rather than buying yeah. pre-bought hummus at the store. There's so many things you can do with a food processor. And so a- anyone vegan or not, I encourage you to get one of those. Um, and then there's other things that can save time. If you are tight on time, look into something like an instant pot pressure or a pressure cooker. Mm-hmm. Those are the same things. The yep. Instant Pot's the main brand. Um, pressure cookers can reduce the time to cook rice, beans, soups, stews, anything like that, um, at least in half. And mm-hmm. so if you've been using a rice cooker or cooking on the stove, you can really cut your, your time down getting a pressure cooker. And then there's other things like just get a, getting a good quality chef's knife and cutting board. I know when I first started, I got one of those sets of knives that you maybe get a target or something mm-hmm. that comes with like a bunch and you think I need all the knives <laughs> and that'll have me be a pro in the kitchen. No, really, you can use one chef knife and one bread knife mm-hmm. and like maybe a small knife for little things. And that can do... O- 99% of your cutting. And then you're having such a better experience. And then I also used to use those like flimsy plastic cutting boards and it just made like k- cooking a little bit clumsy in the kitchen. And yeah. so get yourself a nice cutting board, invest in a, a one big chef's knife. It doesn't have to be crazy expensive and then tr- treat your stuff well, like, um, care for it and, appreciate that it's making cooking easy and fun and yeah, enjoy the process. Well, and to your point about the cutting board, a hundred percent agree with that. Like have a nice sturdy cutting board, uh, makes a huge difference. But if you're going vegan or vegetarian for that matter, you're now not, not going to need five different cutting boards because you're worried about poultry, you know, raw juices and meat and fish and all of that. So it just dawned on me like, Oh, you're only going to need one. Like you're just gonna, like, there's not going to be that kind of issue anymore. Um, so you can invest in a, a little bit of a nicer one. And there is nothing more annoying than having like a real cheapy kind of knife that's blunt or a crappy little plasticky kind of cutting board that just is not quite right. It, it sort of discourages you from the joy of actually cooking, right? Yes. And it's actually less safe. So if you have a blunt knife or especially if you have kids and you're teaching them in the kitchen, yeah. it's more likely to bang off of their, your food and slice you in the hand. So for yeah. safety at the very least, make sure you're working with a, a, a sharp knife. Um, and yeah, absolutely. And it's one of those things that sounds obvious once you do it for, but for so long I was working with dull knives. I didn't even know you were supposed to sharpen your knives. Mm. And it, it, that's just what I thought cooking was. And if you, Take a moment, look at your kitchen, think about how you can optimize it so that your experience when you are cooking, because if you're, if I encourage you to spend lots of time in the kitchen, it's a great thing for your health, for your family, for all the things you want to make sure your experience is going to be as good as you can. And yeah. so, yeah, invest in those things that are going to, the things that are breaking or that are 30 years old and like 
that you're they're kind of working, but they cut you a little bit every time or whatever, yeah. like replace those things. Take the time to do that inventory and set yourself up for success. And I think that depending on where you are in the world now in this stage of the pandemic, um, some farmers markets are starting to open back up again. Um, and top tip, like sometimes these farmers markets, one of the booths at ours locally is a knife sharpener. So you bring your knives from your kitchen to there and they sharpen them for you. So if you've just never done that before, you know, it doesn't cost that much money. Um, so just think about it. There are different um, resources out there. You might just do a Google search for your local farmer's market, see if there's a knife sharpener person or group. Um, and, you know, again, simple uh, changing something in makes it steps it up uh, so that it's a little bit easier for you to, to go and cook for the future. Yes. And most shops that sell knives also, or like serious here in the U S we have places like William Sonoma and all those food mm. shops. They can, if you bring them their your knife, they will sharpen it for you. Brilliant. That's a great tip. So you also talk about the fact that it's so helpful to find your community of plant-based people. Like why is that such a, a big deal? This is pretty surprising for people because it's, not what you would assume. But the biggest reason why people stop being vegan after going vegan is not because the food was bland or they weren't feeling good or that whatever. That all was going fine. Mm. The problem is you're doing something different from almost everyone around you. That's changing a little bit. Now there's more and more people who are eating plant-based and it's becoming more normal, but it still is relatively not the norm. Yeah. And so the most challenging part is just what happens when you sit down at the Thanksgiving table? What are you, all these people who are asking you where you get your protein, having to just deal with these different weird, what happens when food is brought into work and you can't eat it? You go out to whatever, brunch with your girlfriends and uh, there's very little vegan on the menu. Like those are the hard struggles because they're, yeah. they're personal. They're changing the way that we interact with other humans. And it's just a learning curve being able to, to, um, be strong in your beliefs and know who you are and what you want and just, um, navigate those situations. We talk a lot about that on my podcast, the plant powered people podcast, how to overcome those and have those conversations. But if you have some community around you, someone you can vent to or be like, oh my God, this just happened. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. I just went to the doctor and they asked me where I got my protein. Have they never studied nutrition? Just to yeah. have someone else in your life who gets it, um, is so helpful. And that does not have to be someone you actually know in person. It doesn't have to be in someone in your family. Um, it just has to be someone somewhere or a community online. And right now where we're all stuck at home anyway, look online. Yeah. There's groups out there. Um, there's, uh, yeah, on Facebook, you can find tons of vegan groups. There's a lot of ways to connect with people. You can even just uh, go to bloggers and reach out to them by email. I know that might sound like kind of a route, weird route, but I can tell you as a vegan food blogger, it's so exciting to get emails from people who are like, I'm trying, but I feel alone. What can I do? Reach out, find yeah. some connections on, on social media. Um, and then once the pandemic and everything is over, going to events like veg fests, going to farmed animal sanctuary events, there meetups, there's potlucks. There's just stuff happening all around you. So explore your city, wherever you're living, see what's up and then in engage. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, we're not going to be in lockdown forever, right? Like, so <laughs> there is going to, I know it feels like that, you know, but like the reality is we're not like there, there will get to be a place where people are meeting more in public and, and in person. Um, yeah. And I, I think you're right on. I, I know that I have a couple of friends who are vegan and it's so great because they're they're so excited to like like give me recipes or like you know try like invite me over for dinner and see okay try this see what you think about this you know and I and it expands my reality of understanding like oh well that was delicious that wasn't that scary you know um and and I think that that's that it does help it helps tremendously you know uh and it's kind of geeky too but that you know they'll send me pictures of like have you seen this brand in the in the freezer aisle yet or have you seen this or have you tried this and it's like oh well yeah okay this is this is a lot easier easier than I actually thought in my head. Yes. And never worry about inconveniencing those friends. Cause I know people who have been like, I didn't want to tell you I went vegan. Cause I, I didn't know if I was going to stick with it or yeah. I thought maybe I'd mess up. I just was like intimidated to tell you back in the day. And I was like, why? I would have been so excited, but it is so much fun as someone who has been on this journey for a while to be able to 
pay it forward and help people. And like, so now I'll get texts from people like, Hey, I want to try plant-based cheese. Here's a picture of where I'm at in the supermarket, <laughs> which is the best one. Yeah. And so you can like be that source and help people. And if you're listening and you are plant-based, like, you know, it's so fun to be able to um, have people that are interested in trying out new things and you get to share what you know. So yeah, yeah lean on people and let go of any sort of fear or insecurities around um, being imperfect and just, just go for it and have fun. Yeah, I, I think it's a top tip. So if, bottom line, what's the single most important thing that you should do once you go plant-based? What's, what's the top tip there? Have fun. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say have fun. This is not something that needs to be anything but enjoy it. Enjoy the experience. Go to sleep at night knowing that the choices that you made throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout however long are, are bettering the planet. They're really kind to those who are also inhabiting this planet. They're nourishing your body with yummy, healthy foods that are hopefully going to make you feel better, live longer, be there to see your great, great, uh, grandkids yeah. and, um, yeah, enjoy all those feel good, feel good moments. And then, um, just explore, approach things with an open mind, try new foods, new recipes. Uh, don't let it get, get you down when things don't work out. Just move on to the next one and enjoy it. Yeah. And if you fall off the wagon, any advice there? No big deal. I wouldn't even think of it as falling off the wagon. It's it's not like there's this vegan wagon you need to jump on or be <laughs> off of. Like, no one's really? going to shame me. <laughs> well, Jeez, I mean, there's Mary. a lot of self-shame more than anything else. Yeah. And like there are people out there that could shame you, but who cares about them? Ultimately, yeah. what does vegan mean? Vegan to me means you're being more conscientious of the food, of your food and just your different lifestyle choices. And you're doing the best that you can to... Um, Choose things that are kind, that are compassionate, that are nourishing, that are good for others as much as they're good for yourself. So as long as you're on a path of trying to to, to make those choices and con being in a place of constantly trying to learn and improve, if you do something that you're like, oh, I don't think that really felt like what I want to be doing, perfect. There's a learning opportunity. Okay, you're going to make a different decision next time. That's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Such great advice. So I highly recommend if you guys are listening to this and you're curious, check out their new cookbook. It's the Friendly Vegan Cookbook. It's out in stores today. Today's the release date, which is so exciting. Congratulations. So Thank you. Anywhere where books are sold, either online or in person. Um, and it's the 100 Essential Recipes to Share with Vegans and Omnivores Alike. So go check that out. Their website for that is FriendlyVeganCookbook.com. Uh, or you can go to her website, WorldVegan.com, and there's a ton of resources there. Like literally all the things you need um, are there. And again, everything we talked about in today's uh, episode is at our podcast, um, the simplifierspodcast.com. That's where you can find the show notes. Whew, I'm excited, Michelle. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a little nervous, but I, I truly am excited. Like I, I think I'm, I'm 90% excited, 10% nerves. Um, and uh, yeah, I will report back in 30 days and let you know how I feel. Um, because I know that this is going to be tricky in parts, but with a little bit of planning and a little bit of fun, I think I can do it. Oh, you can totally do it. And also I would love to hear before the 30 days, if you're struggling, if anything's a challenge, I want to hear about it. And, um, yeah, it, it's, I, I know you're going to have fun. This yeah. Is, this is awesome. And Thank you. please, yeah, not only to you, but to anyone who's listening who maybe wants to join in on the challenge or give this a try in any capacity, just dip your toes in some plant-based recipes. Um, please use me as a resource. If you want to reach out, my email is at worldofvegan.com, Michelle at worldofvegan.com. You're welcome to send me an email, connect on social media. Um, on Instagram, I'm just at vegan. So you can send me messages there and I would love to hear how it goes and um, be your cheerleader. Mm, I, I'm going to need you. I think I'm going to tap into you and we're like, uh, Michelle, I'm just about to go get some barbecue brisket. Like what? <laughs> Talk me off the ledge. Yes, please <laughs> yes. call me at those moments. Yes. <laughs> so Michelle, I have a few questions to wrap up and this time you've asked the, I've answered the questions last time. I want to ask them again. So, um, what's one book or blog that you're reading these days that's either challenging you or really inspiring you? I just closed the book on Educated by Tara Westover. Have you read mm. that one? Oh, I've heard about it. Yes. Oh my gosh. You've got to read it. It is so good. It really shines a light on 
gosh, what it means to be an educated, to, to have the ability to receive education. Mm. Um, and it's just such a fascinating read. So I highly recommend that to everyone. It's also an extremely popular book. So when I started reading it, I posted it to my Goodreads. I don't know if any of you guys use Goodreads, but it's a great way to sort of track what you're reading. And my publisher for the Friendly Vegan Cookbook was like, oh, I read that. I read that book. It's so good. And then Tony was like, oh, I read this book too. And it's like, it's a book that so many people have read and can can share. So I love that. Yeah. Well, I'll put a link in the show notes for people if you guys want to check that out. It is a book that I've heard about, but I have not read yet. So thanks for the reco there. Mm -hmm. So tell us who's one person in your network that you just feel is up to brilliant things. Uh, so we can shine a spotlight on them and who knows, maybe one day we'll have them on the podcast. Someone who has been extremely inspiring to me. I don't know her in person, but she's incredible. Her name's Sadia, and she runs the YouTube channel Pickup Limes. Mm. Um, and she creates the most inspiring, delicious food videos. As a YouTuber myself, I can appreciate like yeah. great video content. And the way that she teaches you how to make healthful food is just approachable, totally non judgmental, sweet, kind, fun. And it always, I leave watching her videos, wanting to a pick up some new ingredients next time I'm at the grocery store to whip up some yummy food. But it also just leaves me feeling more inspired to eat even healthier. Cause mm. even as a vegan, I have my share of cupcakes and cake and ice cream and cheeses and all the things just made plant-based. Yep. And so I can always use that extra dose of inspiration that gets me to reintroduce even more of the whole grains, the the legumes, the fresh vegetables into my diet. Mm, thank you for that recommendation. We will definitely link her into the show notes as well so we can check out her YouTube stuff. So I believe gratitude and simplicity go hand in hand. Tell me, what are you grateful for today? I am grateful for, well, I'm a new mom and my little one is seven months old and he's just started eating. And I just, every time I look into his sweet eyes. Mm. I just see the world is open to him. He's yeah. learning, learning all of the things around him. And we're able to teach kindness to the next generation. And that gives the ability to create a completely different world than the really kind of painful world that we're seeing today. Yeah. Um, so I just have so much hope for the next generation and also so much gratitude to all the parents out there that are really doing a great job fostering kindness in children. Mm, that's huge. It really is the, the next wave of what is going to change the world. So I just want to encourage anyone that's listening right now, go check out the cookbook. Um, you can go and see a, a sample of it at friendlyvegancookbook.com just to get a taste of, of the, the different types of recipes that Michelle and um, her co-author had put together. Um, it is so approachable, so family friendly. Uh, I would highly recommend checking it out. So Michelle, my last question for you today is this. Um, and again, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, someone somewhere, <clears throat> me, uh, <laughs> is thinking about becoming a vegan uh, or vegetarian. Um, what's one thing you would whisper into their ear just to encourage them? Try a new recipe tomorrow. Not tonight, but tomorrow. Pick a recipe. Take today. Find a recipe. And it can be one that you already have the ingredients for in your kitchen. Or if you're going grocery shopping, then you can pick some new ones. So I challenge all you listening tomorrow, we are all collectively making a vegan recipe for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Amazing. And we'll mm. report back. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Share with Mary. What did you make? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tag me on Instagram. Thank yes. you, Michelle. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure being here for part two of How to Go Vegan. Woohoo. Thank you.